he's black guy Fox, and I'm fulfilling the required mediocre middle-aged white guy quota for having a podcast. And together we're Fox and friends. Today, the third friend who we are talking to about creativity and social justice is Lynn Lee from Bad Cop, Bad Cop. One, two, three. Talking to one of your all-time favorite human beings this week. Tell me a little bit about Lynn. Lynn, she plays in the band Bad Cop, Bad Cop. I've been following them for a while, and her and I first officially met at Lost Evenings last year, and we sang one of my songs on the stage. It was a lot of fun, and I'm really happy to have her on here. Bounce outside has her own nonprofit called Pieces Against Racist, which I'll always fucking back. She cares about community. She cares about just giving people a platform. Here's all this, and they try to make this world a better place and fighting forward. And she's one of my favorite people of all fucking time. And the fact that we're, we're both always Sunny fans, and we all quote that constantly together. We're actually only playing together here soon too. We we just we just played in Vegas together, but we'll be playing together soon at Camp Pennsylvania. So it'll be us, less than Jake, Venomous Pinks, Codependents. Cat bite. A day, a day about love, seven seconds, the Bronx. Literally every talk about honor the sun is going to be in there. So you your bass better be there too. Not not Ed, because that's already gonna be there. But everybody here listening out in this ether, be there for it. And if you used to code black guy fox, when you get a ticket, I say when, not if, but when you get a ticket, because you're gonna get a ticket, you get ten percent off your ticket if you do that too. And I'll, I'll, I'll sign it that I'll be at Punk Rock City's Lives Fest in Denver. It's going to be the Chad Price Peace Coalition, Middle Age Queers, who I just played with, 1876, Johnson Nodgrass, the then it was Pinks, and yours truly. So it's going, to be a, it's going to be a fun time. And we'll get back to this intro because, fun fact, guys, I'm making a new record right now. So I got to get back to that. But let's get right into this interview with Lynn Lee. Today on Clock with Friends, we have Lynn fucking Lee from Back Up. Lynn, good to have you on. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing all right, my friend. Thank you so much for having me on your wonderful podcast. We're extremely happy to have you. I- I'm going to break bro code here and just tell you how happy Ian is to know you because your memes to him just kill him <laughs> on, on, on a daily and weekly basis. You, you, I think you are <laughs> officially his funniest friend, according to him. <laughs> like, like the first time, the first time we when we officially met in in LA, when we were going over one of my songs for my former law seat base. Yeah, I immediately noticed that she had, she had a tattoo of Tim from Money Python, and since then I just knew, yes, we're gonna be we're gonna be good friends. It's gonna be the best time ever. It was quite the stepbrothers moment. Like, don't we just become best friends? I think we actually said that. Why were we going to say it? <laughs> so, who is Will Ferrell and who's John C. Riley? It's an even trade between both. They're pretty much the same person anyway. <laughs> hard to hard to divide that. It's an even split. Although I'm an even split kind of person anyway. That's a very very socialist life that I like to lead. So, um, I I know you guys are working on a new record right now. How's that coming along so far? It's going fantastic. We're really, really, really digging in. And I mean, I can only really speak for myself, of course, but I mean, it feels that like everybody is really on board with not only, you know, obviously the the melodies and everything behind the song, but the messages that we have to say behind the songs are a little bit more personal, actually. At least for me, I've, I've, you know, I've definitely been the type of person that had writes about topics and seldom do I ever really put any of my own personal thoughts or experiences into things because I don't really like to write about that 
but I'm I've become a little bit more vulnerable these days and wanting to I feel like that being a little bit more transparent with not only myself but like kind of sharing that with the world a little bit that hopefully brings some sort of perspective would be beneficial in some way. Maybe we'll get somebody to be like, oh, I never thought of it that way. So when is the new record coming out? Ah, uh, fuck if I know. Honestly, I don't know exactly for sure because we are still working on it. I'm actually in the studio today. We're finishing up some vocal track with our wonderful friend, Johnny Carey, that um, and Old Man Markley and Youth Brigade, Tommy and June. He played the same night as you did, Ian, at Lost Evenings. We're with him for a few days to get the rest of the vocal tracks done. So hopefully by the end of the year, but I don't know for sure. So I'm just going to say, to be determined, folks. <laughs> You'll find out when you do. <laughs> and this is your first record with Alex, right? Yes. First album with Alex. We're very lucky to have her. She's been a very, very, very essential part of what we're trying to bring out in our songs. I mean, she's a, she's a fucking ripper. <laughs> I'm going to play guitar. I'm like, oh, shit. Well, I quit. I'm done. I'm good. I'm going to sit in the corner and cry a little bit. No, nah, but it, I, we were very excited and very, very grateful to have her be a part of this project with us. We're really excited to, to show y'all the new songs when they're going to be ready to come out. So keep your eyes and ears peels but don't really peel them that's fucking gross so many layers of skin i can't trust how excited i am i am for this because i i got i discovered you guys i've been back in like 2019 or so and i've, I've always just fucking love first of all the best band name of all if i wasn't black i thought <laughs> I would say back out back because i relate to that speed and so much so <laughs> yeah I, I, um, I am actually not the original bass player for the band. So I don't know exactly the uh, exact premise behind the birth of that name. Um, I do know that it was created when, um, the original bass player, Jen Carlson, another phenomenally, uh, phenomenally talented musician, literally plays fucking everything. She came up with the name. I think it was just the fact that it just sounded funny, like the whole concept of good cop, bad cop. What's going to name of that cop, that cop? I believe that that's how it was birthed. I just like to tell people, oh, yeah, we're called bad cop, bad cop, you know, because it's like toos toos. So good we named it twice. So that's, that's my take of it. How, how did you join the band? How did you ask out? How did you become a member? You know what's funny? So I moved to California from Philly in 2010. I was in a band at that time. And we we're, you know, playing pretty sporadically, but like, Pretty much on the West Coast, though. I was like, well, I'm just going to move out West, buy one way ticket, and see if I follow my dreams. And so I did that. And then the band had, you know, essentially just stopped. And so well, I was drunk in Huntington Beach around places. But I was, I was at a bar uh, on the patio, and I was all like, man, you know, I just want to play with a bunch of women. Like, why can't I find them? Like, you know, I can't find women to play. Like, I don't know anybody here. I can't find women to fucking jam with. The toughest thing to find is a female drummer. Here comes little Jen Captain on the patio that's like, she just kind of like shoots off to like the side. She's like, I play drums. <laughs> do you want to be friends? And I'm like, yeah, I do. And she invited me over to like a barbecue, which is where I met Stacy because Jen and Stacy had been playing music together in the Bay Area for like 15, 20 years. I mean, at least now 15, 20, at least 20 years at this point. But they've been playing for forever. And that's where I also met Myra and Myra had met Stacy and Jen um, at a show in San Francisco. And then all discovered that we all lived in California. So I met all of them at Jen's barbecue. Later on, had met Jenny at uh, like, a, like a, hey, let's get together and jam. And so she introduced me to Jenny at that point. Eventually, Jen was no longer interested in pursuing anything further with Bad Cop and she had referred me as like initially a felon just be like hey if i can't play these shows you know hit up lens you know don't be happy to do it and it got to a point where i when i went to the first practice we discovered the wonderful thing uh called harmony so yeah and then that that was pretty much it from there and look where i am now well let's see i joined in 2012 so 12 years 
Well, that's if I'm doing the math right. Almost 12 years. I think it was like June, May or June of 2012. Before that, how did you get into the bass? That's an instrument that I'm, like, I don't play anything, but it's one that I'm oddly obsessed with. I really like what bass adds to a sound, especially in music like this or in jazz with a stand-up bass or whatever. But, like, the how did the how did you find the bass? Oh, because I'm a shitty guitar player. <laughs> Weirdly enough, I, I funny because I, I tried my shot at like, playing guitar and uh, realized how horrible I was at it. But the thing is, is, like I could hear, I could hear bass line pretty easily, and so I was able to pick up playing bass line using the like, the acoustic guitar. And then eventually, I was just like, "Well, I'm terrible at guitar, so I'll just trade it in for a bass." And that's been pretty much it. I learned how to play the upright bass through YouTube video. So thanks, YouTube. Thumbs up. It's a presidential thumbs up. Thank you, YouTube. Even though this is not a video podcast, if you could only see the way that I'm pointing <laughs> with my thumb, it's very politician-like. Yeah, that, that was pretty much where, that, that's how it all started. So. But it's a fun instrument. Um, and I, I think it's, I think also, I also don't consider myself a particularly advanced bassist either. Like, I know there are a lot of bass players out there that are just like, well, holy shit. There's a whole different thing here that I'm, I'm possibly too busy or maybe lazy to discover. But you know, I'm always willing to at least try new ways of playing or discovering different chord progressions that I, you know, that I never thought of before. I'm definitely learning that. Stuff. I think it's cute that we're the butt of every, every band joke, though, so. because we're the foundation and we're the butt, and so <laughs> we hold. The shit down and bring the brown note, but oh, it's full circle. I mean, but if Pay Valka's one, you have your own signature bass by Reverend. Yeah, I never thought that that would ever happen. Ever, I'm fucking forever grateful that Reverend Pen and Penny, they they're just wonderful people. It's a wonderful company to be endorsed by, uh, and the fact that they believe in us enough to not only provide myself a signature, but also Stacy and even Jenny as well, too. So it's like, you know, it, it's a wonderful, it's a beautiful thing. And they really treat, you know, their artists like family. So um, I'm, I, I still am in shock that, that there is like a brand of bass named after me. It, it's fucking weird, but it, I'm not, I'm not mad, obviously. It's just, you know, I don't, I'm humbled. <laughs> And blushing at the same time. If y'all can see this fucking shit, my face is red and not the rosé. How much how much stay did you have into the actual like make make of the base out of curiosity? Honestly, I love the stock model of the Dub King Semi Hollow Body so much. Like I love everything about that. Like the way that it, the tone, how incredibly light it is. Um, and it's a you know, a shorter scale neck, so my baby T Rex arms can reach. And my, you know, baby hand could reach the frets properly and stuff too. And so I just told Ken, I was like, I just want that model, but do it, if you want to sing, can I, it wouldn't, can I just change, do the colors? <laughs> and so that's why I went with purple and gold because they love print. So, but purple or gold is such a great color combination. So, <laughs> well, baby love print. Everyone should. I fully, I fully yeah. believe that. <laughs> And also, I mean, speaking of bass, I, bases and bassists, uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about bassists against racists. Yeah, I'm um, still going with it, uh, which is pretty remarkable, honestly. Um, I started this campaign back in October of 2020 when, uh, you know, there was certainly a rise in marches like for, you know, Black Lives Matter and for Stop AAPI Hate. I just felt like I could only do so much personally. I only have so much of my own personal resources to be able to give. So I was like, what other way could I possibly make some sort of impact? And I was like, well, I have a pretty decent platform. I'm a base. Oh, I used to guess races have a really lovely ring to it. So I see, I, I was like, well, I thought of the idea. I was like, well, it'd be really cool to showcase base players that, you know, uh, obviously support anti-racist, pro-LGBTQ+, plus, pro-feminist, pro-abortion, pro-refugee-related um, organization 
both, you know, within the, that are involved in the U.S., but also internationally as well. And so I was like, well, it'd be cool if we could do like pre-orders that are specific to a bass player featured for that month. And it only goes to that month, you know, like, because, you know, a lot of people don't understand that like printing screens is, you know, it's pretty costly. So to have that just kind of in stock, A, it loses its exclusivity that way too. But also it's it's just not cost effective that way. And we want to make sure that we can raise enough money primarily for these organizations that the basis wants to have the proceeds go toward. So doing pre-orders was, was um, you know, is and so currently at this time, just the best way to showcase that and be able to provide an opportunity for people to purchase these shirts as like a collectible of, of their favorite bass players or whatever, showcase that bass player and giving them a little a little spotlight too. Supporting two female-owned businesses, one being Chaos Merch, which is Gabby Chaos of the Venomous Pigs, another female bass player. And she's based out of Arizona, who uh, handles all the U.S. orders. And then, you know, the proceeds for those orders would go towards like an American-related organization. And then we have Enos Bartle, who is our merch manager for Bad Cop, but also our tour mom in Europe as well, because... <laughs> I tour manage, but I will not do you. I will not do international tour managing. <laughs> Unless it's in England. But yeah, no. Or or if I get hired to be a tour manager, I'm not gonna like I'll do it for another band and that's just my only role. I can't I can't do both tour managing and be an artist in multiple countries. Too much. I know my boundaries. But anyways, Enos handles, you know, all the international sales and the proceeds for those those tours, international NGOs. We've got, you know, we've donated to organizations. Like Doctors Without Borders, prime example, being one of the main organizations that are helping with the atrocities that are happening in Gaza right now. By the way, I'm going to say it. Ceasefire now. Now, now, now. Fucking now. Jesus Christ, I can't break. It's part of this tiredness on my face is probably just unfortunately doom scrolling on, on the topic. We also, you know... Donated to pro refugee organizations like Sea Watch Crew, who help migrants crossing the Mediterranean that are, you know, seeking refuge. Also, organizations like the ACLU in the state. We've done, you know, Planned Parenthood. We've done NARAL. We've done the Trevor Project. We've we've done Black Lives Matter. We've done Stop AAPR. Hey, we've also done like local organizations. There's been like that. We've done like the National Bailout uh, Project as well. It's really just any of these particular topics of the basis choice to decide on. Or if they're just like, you know what, if you could choose for me, that'd be great. And so we kind of talk as a team and be like, how about these two organizations? Then we launch the base dance race campaign till the end of the month. And then Gabby and Enos get the shirts printed. Oh, by the way, the artist that does the artwork on the shirt, his name is Paul Smith, aka Zombie Teeth Designs, who has been so generous to donate his time in drawing up every single one of these graphics. So mad shout out to my entire team for doing this with me for nearly three years. Uh, I think we're, we're, we're definitely pushing. I, I haven't done the math in a long time because I've been busy, but we work really close to hitting like at least $70,000 in donation since starting this. And I'm just, honestly, I'm just going to keep going until I either don't have the bandwidth for it or anymore, which I, I don't have the heart to do that or until I run out of bass players or until like nobody wants to do this anymore, you know, but at least even, if, you know, even if not a prolonged campaign, at least it, it was something that has been done and it made an impact in some way. It is a contribution and the effort is there. Um, and I can't stress enough that like campaigns like this Programs like, you know, the, the, the nonprofit like Stacy and Myra and Silva Snake Oil and a bunch of our friends that are involved in here in LA called the Sidewalk Project that help with harm reduction on Skid Row. This is very time consuming and very stressful work all in all at, at different levels, obviously. And it's never, I don't think it's ever going to meet up to some people's expectations. And quite honestly, I don't give a shit about that. I'm working really hard to lean towards like, at least the effort was there and we're trying your best. And that is the effort. That is the movement that should be the most appreciated. <laughs> I fully agree on that. Um, I think we talked about it we talked about it before privately, but I 
I, when, when it comes to musicians getting, and that's the reason why, why I love what, what you all do and why I love what this piece against racist because it's so fucking bad at. And what, what, what you're, what, you. no, I, you're welcome. And I feel like one thing that we, as musicians, I feel like it's one thing to sing about this stuff, but you also have to walk the walk. Like, actually, put like, like, actually behind the words that you are singing about. Yeah. I also think that on top of that, it's like, making the effort to walk the walk i think is the most important and really trying to make that effort what i don't what i don't try to encourage or at least i won't i certainly won't tolerate this kind of behavior anymore are are, are when people feel the need to give their unsolicited opinions about how you should have done more or you're not doing enough to do this or why didn't you speak about this it's like Best, I'm not, we're really trying here. <laughs> Sorry if I didn't meet up to your expectations, but I'm not here. Like, I'm trying to put, you know, at least this is my prerogative is that I'm trying, you know, and I could, you know, I would hope that this would be kind of across the board with anybody that's in this particular situation. But like, we're just trying our fucking best here and trying to make a positive impact in the best way that we possibly can. We can't meet everybody's needs. You know, we can't meet everybody's expectations. And I'm going to apologize in advance if I don't meet your expectations or if you don't think that I'm doing a good enough job to be the social activist that you thought I was. I'm sorry that that's the way you perceive me. But your opinion does not get to dictate what my actual integrity lies. So I know that I am trying my best and I'm not about to let someone else's opinion of me be able to diminish the things that I've continue to work on and have tried to accomplish. And I'll only talk and, and if you and I, I don't give a shit if I lose fans or whatever or lose what I don't I don't care. Followers, I don't give a shit. Unfollow me if you don't think I'm good enough for you. I don't care. I'd rather focus my energy on the people that know the and appreciate the work and effort that I'm actually trying to put in here without burning myself out because I didn't because you're not happy what the, the work that I'm putting in. <laughs> And that makes sense. Yeah, that makes absolute sense to me. Like the one rule I have for myself in life, call it the airplane rule. Like when you're on the airplane, they're like, you have to put your mask on before you can help others with theirs. Like you have to protect your own yourself. peace. Yeah. If you want to be able to continue helping other people. So that makes absolute right. sense. I, I mean, it's just like that saying, like, what does RuPaul say? If you can't love yourself, how are you going to love somebody else? Or if you can't, you know. If you can't help yourself first, how do you expect to help anybody else? That's just the bottom line. And, you know, I'm trying, just trying, and I'm going to continue to try. And if you, and if for those out there that focus a lot of their energy on just wanting to slander people because they're not doing enough or that they haven't spoken up enough and all of a sudden are a traitor of some sort because they haven't done enough work or whatever, fucking keep going at it. I really don't care because again, right. I'm try I'm I'm actually doing work that's contributing to a positive change in some way. And that effort did not go unrecognized. Yeah. Um I like shit talk is gonna talk shit no matter where you're at. You know, hate is gonna hate. That's the other thing too, like like will both of us be marginalized artists. Where are we going to a lot after right now? Where we were seeing a lot of yeah. a lot of shit going, going being thrown at us like on screen or on social media or on TV. So we we can all react someone yeah. because we are we are actively hurt. So we can't be speaking yeah. out all the fucking time about 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 these issues because it's we're so processing and it's so just hard for us. Yeah, and I and I find it like and I'm trying to you know uh, I've written a song essentially just that kind of about like. What is with, what is with this obsession or justification with being vengeful? What is that real just like, do you like, and, and, and this kind of pertains to a lot of different topics, but I will, I'll give you a little example here. And this is just my take on it. I hope that like my take and my, on this topic will hopefully you know, maybe open up some minds on this because it's a it's a topic that's really important to me. It's the it's abolishing the death penalty. I think capital punishment is a sorry excuse. 
a, a, a bullshit excuse uh, to just justify a vengeful act as a mean to seek to seek justice, like a permanent a permanent solution to justify a, like justify punishing a crime. And I, I don't think that anybody. I don't give a shit if you know where your where your stature is at in the hierarchy, where whatever it is. I don't think anybody has the right to dictate that person A gets to die because of whatever heinous act that they've committed. I I understand, and I get the argument of like, well, what if this guy raped your mother or whatever? Well, like that is a horrible heinous act. Me killing this person. The only time killing somebody is okay with me is if it's somebody's coming at me and they're going to fucking kill me personally in my acts of self-defense and I accidentally kill that person. That's a completely different story. I think a group of people that sit down and decide whether or not somebody gets to live or dies is fucked up. And it only takes one innocent person, one unjust or one, uh, you know, Somebody that has been wrongfully accused. It only takes one person that has been convicted wrongfully in that circumstance to fault that system. It only takes one faulted. And it doesn't bring back, it doesn't take away the pain of the original crime anyways. It doesn't take away, it doesn't, like, what do you really, it, it brings maybe temporary joy, you know, everybody. Everybody's got a little bit of that, that feeling of getting even with somebody, right? Everybody has it, especially when there's been a wrongdoing to yourself. It is natural to feel like, well, they did this to me, so I'm going to do this back to them. It is a natural feeling. I think it's also a reactionary feeling. And, and reactionary feelings have a tendency to be impulsive. And so if you are, if you give yourself the time to really think about the circumstance in its entirety and think about another solution in which you know a, a, it, something can be sought after without it being so anger driven so just like you know so mob porch driven you know and I, 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 just, I just think that there, if there was just a way to to I don't know, just not be so like I hate that revenge is, is disguised as justice. I hate that. I fucking hate it. I think about that shit when it comes to like, you know, uh I think about that when I see in movies, like, you know, like I must avenge my mother by killing the man that killed her, kind of thing, you know. And I'm just like I can see how that there there is a um an appeal to that. I can see it. I also think that there could be other solutions around it without it resorting to that. I could be wrong, though. You know, maybe I'm. This is where I could be wrong about it, but my where I'm standing at now, you know, I, I think that no matter how much someone's hurt me, and I've, I've had my share of people really hurting me before. But for me to wish, and in no matter how much I hate that person <laughs> or people or whatever, and even like you know. Like fuck Nazis, you know. I don't wish death upon them. I don't. What I don't. I don't wish death upon anybody. I just don't. I don't. I don't think that is a viable solution. I don't. I think being able to give somebody an opportunity to hopefully change their outlook and more open mindedness would be uh, a solution to work towards first. And then if they continue to be, and then if they come at you violently, you should then fucking kick their ass or shit. But you know. <laughs> But yeah, I just I, I don't know. It's a uh, it's a it's a it's a very nuanced topic for me. Uh, you know, in general, I guess like how do we how do we navigate society that is so driven by it's such a reactionary, impulsive action like like vengeance. So, no, I, I I fully agree. Like the the older I get, the more I I understand the saying, "Hate the sin, love the." Sin. Because for, for mm -hmm. me, it's, it's the thing of we can condemn somebody's actions, but we have to give them, give them if we can, we can hold them accountable for whatever, whatever action they've done. Yes. But we need to yes. give them that space to rehabilitate and to give them the space to, to do better. So just kind of 
pushing pushing them down. Like there 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 are people that that have that have that I feel like have wronged me that I also have to share. I I love to share bills, but. And there have been points in my life where I said, I, I, I want to call them out. I want to say something, but I also know that's not going to do anything. That's only going to do myself. That thing is only going to do myself. But I just, I just ignore it just to calm myself down and just accept, accept what it is and not wish I harm upon them or try to cause them harm. That's just going to fall back on me for karma. So, I mean, yeah, like it's just, but yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you, Ian. I think, you know what, um, and I know we've talked about this before, um, and I know I've definitely expressed not only my love for It's Always Sunny, but my love for Ted Lasso. Yeah, that show, and I'm serious when I say that, sh- that show changed my life, completely changed my outlook and thinking. Like, I think about that episode um, where Sam and his dad are sitting there and that awful circumstance happened to Sam, and he was so upset. I'm not going to give away exactly what that is in case people have not seen it, which y'all need to get on that fucking... I'm, I'm going to lasso each and every one of you that are listening to this podcast in the Ted Lasso if you haven't fucking seen it yet. I think I'm on double digits now as far as how many people are told to watch and be like, dude, I love this show. Um, and I think you're one of them. Yes. He is. I, I actually have to thank you for getting him into it because then it gave me somebody else to talk to about Ted Lasso. Yeah. And like the, the quote that that uh, old, his name is Ola Obasanya, he uses is fight forward, not back. That sticks with me so much. And it's not like the physical act of fighting anybody, but the best way to fight forward is to be able to proceed forward in a more productive way in a more almost not quite a completely forgiving way but a more open-minded way or a more a a less reactionary way a less you know impulsive way i guess you can say but yeah i i that quote that it just sticks with me every time just like fight forward not back i'm not gonna lie like i am not the most wholesome person on the planet watching ted lasso made me at least a little bit more wholesome like that show was that like good at what it does it even made me watch a couple football matches uh i still didn't know what was going on during any of them but i'm like okay this is the thing i'm not watching yeah i know i've I've started watching football as well again well i used to watch i used to watch i used to follow arsenal for a little bit but um because i i mean i used i played soccer for a long time but uh and i just stopped because i was just like i don't want to watch sports but yeah like i you know there's so many things about that show. Like I, I actually try to live my life, like as as if I am a little bit of a little bit of Keely, the the power of Rebecca because that woman is a superhero, and a Wadi. So she literally looks like an I like a little combination of those two with a little bit of humility from Higgins, and um, I I like to uh, walk like Roy Kent. Um, <laughs> And just shout from the stage, oh, listen up. I'm not something to fucking say. You know? <laughs> I didn't start watching it because of football. I didn't start watching it because it was wholesome. I hear that you and I have a, a shared uh, love of karaoke, and I watched it because there was karaoke scenes. Oh, yeah. And that was enough they to get me in. And, then I... <laughs> and that's Hannah Waddings- Waddingham's real voice. Oh, yeah, she can sing her ass off. Yeah, I think her mom was like a world-renowned opera singer or something like that. She got she got them parts, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think for for me uh, that um when it came to watching Ted Lasso, I relate to Ted a lot just because a lot of my life, I always focus on making everybody else happy, trying to heal them without actually trying to find ways to I guess heal myself. And I also yeah, and what. I, I I think I talked to you about a little bit about this. I, I can't remember when when I after I watched the show, I, I really used to need a lot because at, because I always felt like I was really just never heard and just nobody really gave gave shit about what I wanted to say. But while I was at while I was at Lost Evenings, like you and Frank and all of them really just gave shit about what about what I wanted and I just wanted to come talk to stuff. So I always mm-hmm. felt like in, in that general in that general where I, I felt nice to see people actually care. 
ain't, ain't give a shit about me. And I, I never told Eric this, but we, but me and my label head, Mad Flood, and my best friend, Jake, we have a group chat, and I consider them like my diamond. Because I can tell them about anything. Uh, so, um, <laughs> and they will just order me to me all the fucking time. <laughs> diamond dogs out. Bark at us, Ian. What do you got to bark at, Ian? <laughs> <laughs> I saw BC in the race. I also know you, you're producing. How, how's that been? Because I know you produced Venomous Pinks, if I'm not mistaken, correct? I co-produced that album, the Vita Morris album, which, again, I, I had never, ever had experience doing that before. And they're like, hey, do you want to produce our album? I'm like, you guys know I have, a, I have no experience doing that, right? And they're like, that's cool. We just like the way you write songs. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to make you bitches sing harmony. Better get ready. <laughs> I'm gonna make you bitches sing. <laughs> yeah, that's all. That's honestly been like the only producing thing that I've done. Which, again, like it's not a, a role that I um, hold myself high on or anything like that. Uh, I'm just grateful for that opportunity. We'll uh, continue to, uh, you know, if I'm given more opportunity to do that, then yeah, I would love. And if I have the time, to, you know, got a lot of shit on my own too. But if I'm able to squeeze it in, and if people want to work with me, that's up them. I'd be happy to do it. I guess this next question, is there anybody else who approached you about producing them or? Yeah, I'm okay with that. People, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to expect this, you know, it's another thing I'm not, uh, I'm trying to live by, to not live by expectations so much, but with more appreciation. And so it's like, I can't expect people to reach out to me, but I will appreciate when they're adopted. At least you have. There's one opportunity I'm looking forward to is the fact that we get to play Camp Plus V again together. Yeah, we do. So fun. And this time I get to bring my, my band gets to play too. And not my drunk ass playing acoustic at fucking midnight. Although it was very fun. Very fun. And Ian, I know we've seen how far away that, that acoustic stage is from the main here. I know it's different. It's going to be different this coming year. But <laughs> last year I was like, oh, that's like a good half mile. Of, you know, a lot of mud. The them is pinks. Brilliant. And like the last person playing that day, it's gonna be me and my guitar player, Corey Magnum. Oh God, this this is so much pressure. Everybody's gonna walk out on us, but it's gonna be fun. I'm so. Oh, happy. don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. I played the last day. I was the last person to play the last day, and there were still like 60, 70 people. I think it definitely felt like it was a very decent crowd, and it was very fun. So, please do not get discouraged. It's going to be a wonderful time. I probably won't walk out on you, even though it's past my bedtime. Well, I think I didn't get experience last year. Was back that people handing me up the Lord shop. I'm like, I don't know if I was lucky or if I was if I missed out. You were lucky. I, I mean, I would before, encourage. You but I felt like I need experience. You got to try it once and then yeah, never again. You got to try it once. Yeah, you got to try it once and then hate life for about thirty seconds and then. Never do it again. Although I well, did it again. I was, yeah, there's a reason why I never do this shit. Well, here's the thing. I, I had a one, like, in 2021 in Chicago ever a house show, and I got too drunk off of that. I ordered, like, I, I can't make this. I ordered, like, $3 worth of white caps on DoorDash because I was that yeah. drunk off from the Lord. But we'll, 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 we'll see what it, what it brings me this year for it. It was, it was, that, I was yeah. stupid around handing it out, I'm pretty sure. But it was. <laughs> yeah. I love grapefruit, but fuck the Lord. Wait, is it supposed to taste like grapefruit? It's like, yeah, I guess. Oh I my don't know. God. People are like, this is I... grapefruit. I'm like, it tastes like fucking arse. It tastes like fucking gasoline. Somebody once asked me what I thought Malort tasted like, and it's like, okay, so somebody reanimated a corpse, and then they brushed their teeth, and then they um, spit it out uh, when they were rinsing, and that's that's what you get the backwash of a corpse that has brushed its teeth. I mean, I've never had a personal experience with that, so I can't imagine what that would taste like. But I have accidentally tasted gasoline. Accidentally. I don't remember how, but I just it's embedded in my brain that taste. And I'm like, oh, that tastes like Malort. I think I was probably, I feel like it was like pumping gas and like maybe like the handle like came out like fast or something like Flash in my face. I don't remember. I just remember. I just remember tasting gas burning before in my life. I just don't remember when. And I remember it being awful. And that's what Malort's like. So, so Ian needs a sober shot of Malort. I will remember this. Noted. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
So yeah, like, Perch. We're we're gonna have that because I, I so my my schedule is I I fly into Denver on the fourth. I play in Denver on on the fifth. Then I fly from the sixth from Denver to Allentown. Then heads pick me up. So somewhere in between that time, between when Does I play, Allentown have an airport? Yeah, yeah. It's got a small regional one. Okay, just southwest fly into there. Or? I don't know. All right, I'll figure it out. I'm I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm, I think I'm thinking I'm flying flying in either Bill America or United. But okay. yeah, I'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah. We uh, usually do I'm, southwest just because of the two free check bags. Yeah. Does that work for your yeah. instruments? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yep. Your... <laughs> so what, what is next song for, for Bank Dot? Besides the next record, what up? What, what, what? We're playing shows on the way out to Forest Fest in the North and then on the way back. And then we have... Let me see. Oh, and we're playing Hawaii. Yeah, we're going to be in Hawaii. Uh, yeah, we got a few different runs coming up. But yeah, it's just cute. Gonna be a nice patch summer. And now I think it is time for our favorite game of all of Fox and Friends with some rapid fire questions. Oh shit. Okay. Five, motherfucker. I have that video clip saved on my phone because it makes me laugh every time. Hard eyes, motherfucker. Big fries, motherfucker. Apple pants, ah, motherfucker. Six eyes save lives, so motherfucker. Good. <laughs> so we got some rapid fire questions for you. My first one is: it says you're from Philly. Best Philly cheesesteak. Where do you go? Oh, Tony Loose. Tony Loose. South Phillies. Don't go to fucking Patrick Jeter's like a fucking weed. By the way, those places are racist as fuck. Anyways, motherfuckers have like Greek, Greek English wearing America signs on them. Fuck you. Go fuck yourselves. Your cheesesteak suck. Anyways, whiz whiz. Who the fuck puts whiz cheese on fucking cheesesteaks? You get fucking provolone like a goddamn civilized human, okay? So, and plus you order it dyslexic and shit. Whiz, 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 whiz. Are you kidding me? No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, they're not really. I, I, I fucking hated that shit. Anytime my friends are like, let's go to Pants and Gino's. I'm like, how about we go to Tony Luke's where you can get a really good cheesesteak? Okay. That's just me. First one, I love you so fucking much. Second, my 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 favorite I like Angelo I I went to that one too. I I love their cheese cake. Wait, who? who? Angelo's. I haven't been to Angelo's. Like when I find a place that I like, I just kind of stick with it. So I didn't really venture either. I mean, I did try Jim on Fowl Street, and the smell that you get from outside is exactly what you taste on it. That that explains a lot of that. And that fan. Uh, so yeah, I just stuck with Tony. Looks my entire. The entire time I lived in Philly, town. Yeah, uh, uh, the other one is, what is your Mount Rushmore of always sunny characters? Side and main. Side and, ooh, ooh, that's tough. Okay, well, obviously Danny DeVito. I'd have to say Uncle Jack needs to be in there. And let's see, I think Cricket. Definitely Cricket. Um, And, oh, um, Artemis. I love Art. Yeah. Hi, my name's Artemis. I've got a bleached asshole. <laughs> I'm gonna take off the bra, blast these nips. <laughs> Mount Rushmore of bassists. Ooh, me. Uh, I'd have to say Matt Freeman. I'd have to say the because I love her so much. Eloise from the Linda Lindas, and I've known her since like she was six. And like the fact that the Linda Lindas are so big now, it makes fun. Remind me to send you a picture of when Eloise was like six and I'm just like standing there like an idiot, like, ha, 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 ha. you know, <laughs> I just thought, yeah. And now they're playing stadium. So she'd be up there for me. I'd have to go with Victor Wooten because that dude's a maniac. And oh, Georgia South of Nova Twins. That takes some badass. She is a badass. I love her. Check out Nova Twins, by the way. They're fantastic. What are your recent gold guilty pleasures if you have me? Oh, I love li- I have a playlist of all RuPaul songs. Like, come a girl, put your face in your wall, head to toe. That's your whole back. Yeah, I love, love that shit. shit. I go dance walking on a daily basis. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, girl, I'm going to fast down the alley. Like, <laughs> the, what? Really? 
I don't, would they be considered guilty pleasures if they're good? Uh, yeah, I really can't think of guilty pleasure level songs other than just like RuPaul and like fun dance music like that. Okay. Mount Rushmore of your top four karaoke songs that you do. Okay. All right. Ace of Spades, number one. Dirty Deed, number two. They're usually like my go tos. <laughs> just because of just like the, the vocal range in the song and it's chop stewy, but it's just some of it down. I just like, I love just changing the voices around. And uh, oh, oh, it's Three Non Blondes. Three Non Blondes. Um, in Austin, yeah, Rockin' love that song. Oh my hey, God. Oscar, how are you? I got into her because that fucking He Man video. And then after <laughs> that, I just fucking love that song so much. Now, Amazing. My, my last question for you is well, the two parter. Who oh. cool. in music do you want to work with next? And when are we writing a record together? <laughs> Who do I want to work with next? That's a tough question. But there's too many people. <laughs> but like work, work or tour with, I'll say that. I would love for Boy Genius to hit us up. You know how rad it would be to tour with fucking Phoebe Bridgers? I would love, or that band Muna. Like, I don't know. It would just be really nice to see, like, I mean, we're, we're like fucking middle-aged punk rock bitches. <laughs> like, let's think about topics that we care about, like, I really wish that we could, you know, I don't know. I just feel like there's just so much stagnant lineups. Like you see the same lineup over and over. Trust me, we're kind of guilty of it too, of course, you know, which is fine. I, but I, I, I don't know. I just feel like there should just be a little bit more diversity when it comes to uh, tour lineups. You know, I see a lot of, I see a lot of the same bands on the same exact tours and massive tours nonetheless too. And it's just like, Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, maybe next time. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think, I think you really right. And especially because it's, you know, and, and it doesn't have to be like, yeah, we're a punk band, but like, we don't have to just stick with punk bands that we tour with. Like we can, why not just like, this is, we're supposed to live in a melting pot of society, right? As people, like the more, the more diverse we are, the better, the more open-minded we end up being and the better opportunity, the best opportunities will come for everybody at that point, right? Because it just opens up all those doors. And it's still not there yet. Getting there, I do see it's getting there with some bands, which is great. But yeah, it would just, you know, I would also like to see those opportunities be given to, you know, older people. Because I feel like, you know, yeah, we're fucking older and stuff like that, but we're still pretty fucking spry. You, you, do, you do splits every night on stage. I don't know how the fuck you do it, but... but. Oh, <laughs> I do that shit until I can't anymore. And I have I have sprayed my MCL before doing the splits on stage. So it's like, it's not easy, but, you know, I, I, I live to perform, if anything. So I love doing I, it. I think we're still, like, we still got, you know... We still got the energy, and I think if people would give us a chance, like, we could really bring, you know, we could bring what we have already brought into the world to a to a completely, you know, a different demographic. You know, we should, the, the music's there, you know, the messages are there. We just need, we just, you know, it'd be nice to share the pot with everybody. I fully agree. There needs there need to be more representation, representation of us on stage. We yeah. see it because everybody, everybody represented as much as possibly can. It's so, I think one of the sweetest things to go through is like, when you see it, like, do you get hit up by like little kids? And especially like for me being, you know, first generation Vietnamese, like, last I checked, there weren't many of us out there that played punk rock music. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And like I'll go to shows, and there's been a couple occasions where like I'm I've met other, especially females of Asian descent or like little girls that you know that are Vietnamese or uh, you know Chinese. And they're like, 
I never thought that watching you, I could do something like this. And it inspired me to want to do something like that. And I remembered that feeling when I saw Cassandra on fucking Wayne World. And I was like, oh, you're telling me I can do something like that? And I don't have to conform to the like to what's expected out of me like wow that's wonderful so so ian oh. wayne's world's a movie that came out in the early 90s uh, before you were born and uh uh-huh was, uh, I, I keep forgetting how young you are i was about to sing dream weaver but you know what fuck you no <laughs> i'm so angry right now. fuck man <laughs> uh, that's one of my favorite movies of all time. I love Wings World. Oh yeah, so much. Yeah, like I, I mean, even like you know, you know, watching uh, Tia Carrera, you know, I was like, holy shit. But also, even like movies like Goonies and Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom, like Gigi Kwan played a pivotal role in giving me motivation and inspiration. There is Stacey. <laughs> Who <laughs> shows up next to Danny DeVito? <laughs> Even seeing like actors like Kiki Kwan and Michelle Yeoh that then inspired me to be able to again like just be able to pursue something that wasn't like expected out of me and something that I really enjoyed doing. Like I, the one thing, and I'll say this, you know, I love playing music. I love writing music. I think you know everything about it is one of the most beautiful things but the one thing that i live for is to perform i will always find a way to perform whether it be karaoke whether it's me doing the carlton in the middle of the club dance floor it uh or on stage um you know because i will never stop doing the carlton stacy and i will 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 do dances together i just love to perform i, I just i live for it you know i did gymnastics for a long time and the one thing that I loved out of gymnastics was to be able to perform each apparatus in front of people. Like whether I did well or not, whether I did look, like, whether, you know, and, and I mean, when I was younger, obviously like the, the technicalities and the, the judging and everything like that was very important to me because you, were, you strove to be perfect. But it, 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 what really made me happy was to be able to do it in front of people, especially the one thing that was really important to me is to be able to do it in front of my family. And I'm very grateful to have my sisters and my mother that have been supportive of my endeavors since the beginning, even though I, you know, it's not been easy, not been easy, um, but they continue to support and they, you know, they'll fly, they fly to like Australia to see us play at a festival. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we're going to come to Melbourne. I'm like, oh, this you just pop out and do that so you know like it, it's, it's that that's one thing i'm extremely grateful for and that uh, and if there's any audience that i could i could do it in front of it would be my family my dad's passed away for you know for almost uh, for over seven years yeah seven years so and like my dad never saw me never saw me perform in music never saw me perform in sports none of that and it was when things happen in a sequence where you're just like, that's strange. Or that's, that's peculiar. Cause I'm not, I'm not really like, a, I'm obviously not religious by any means. I'm very logical person. In fact, I'm not really, I'm not really all that spiritual. I'm just like the, oh, okay. If I die, throw me in the track. But you know, it, I found it pretty interesting that three months before my dad had passed away, uh, was the first time that he had met my band because we were on tour um, and we had a couple of days off. And I, I grew up in Rochester, New York, so my parents were still living there. And um, and that was the first time he had met them ever, ever. And then three months later, he had passed away. So, um, you know, I, 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 hope, I sincerely hope that, and, you know, everybody's like, oh, no, your dad would be proud of you. He's so proud of you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't really know. I'm sure he is in, in his heart. I don't doubt the music that I like that there's a part of my dad that was proud of me at some extent. Um, uh, but it, it, it as, as somebody that couldn't see it, you know, there was no real substance to it. Um, all, and obviously nothing I can do about it now. All I can hope 
is that if there is any spirituality behind it, that what I'm do that he's able to see what I'm doing and be stoked and have like a little front row seat and be like, yeah, that's my kid. <laughs> and my <laughs> baby daughter. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's just one thing that I, I, I you know, I, I just love to perform and I can act a fool. I, I can tell you how many times I have fallen on the stage, not fallen off on like i i have like flipped and fell onto my stomach and i would just land like hi <laughs> <laughs> i i slipped and fell and would puck and roll and be like no nah, nothing to see here folks you know like it was just always the even mistakes were always part of the performance i even made to say while singing with you ian <laughs> and i was like here go with it <laughs> i still love still loved every every second of it and i I, yeah. I can honestly say with, with every ounce, ounce of my being that my favorite thing about Lost Evenings was us connecting, us becoming friends during that. So I, I do yeah. mean it. That's one of my favorite I things. I, I'm, I really glad that, I'm really glad that you, were, that you wanted to be part of Fox and Friends. I'm really glad to, to have met Thank you. Thank you and, so much for having me. And, we, and I'm we so grateful to have befriend you. We, we are going to cause so much mayhem together this year. It's, it's going to be fucking great. <laughs> And I hope, and Ed, Ed, are you going to be at Camp Punctilini as well? I will, because yeah. I have to pick him up from the airport. I, uh, we're, we're going oh, to have, have our own little folk punk green book. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Liz. I really appreciate it. This show is the brainchild of Black Guy Fox folk punk Rio. You can find him on all the social medias as Black Guy Fox or Black Guy Fox Music, as well as on Bandcamp. Merch, music, and ticket sales are how independent music gets sustained, but word of mouth also helps a great deal. The intro and outro are both from the song New American Meltdown by Black Guy Fox, so that's legally covered because this is his podcast, and that is his song available on the album Life, Love, and the Bomb. Additional music elements provided by Ben Dumb Production Music. Check out more at bdmusicproduction.com for all your bespoke royalty-free background music needs, sound design, and editing by Ed Cunard, who appears courtesy of his dog and many, many cats. Cover art by Jacob Matthews, a pal who has been down since day one. Finally, while Fox and Friends firmly believes that punk rock is and should be a safe space, we know it can't be safe for everyone without excluding bad elements. So remember, remember, Tell your local Nazis that they're fascist to fuck off. Ian, uh, you want to kick us off and, and introduce Lynn? Yes, I can do that. All right. Little pause. Hello, my friend. Oh, he, he ain't even started yet. He, he, he was giving hello. me a pause for the, for the sound break. Oh, I was like, hello, my friend. <laughs>